Welcome to GVTV episode 4. I hope you're all keeping well. I've heard from many of you that this prolonged isolation is causing more anxiety with even more stressful work from home conditions. We're all longing for more social interactions beyond the screen. But the coast isn't clear yet. WHO epidemiologist Maria Van Kerkhove says we need to get into the mindset that it's going to take some time to come out of this pandemic. We still have to be vigilant. Social distancing is key. Even these guys are doing it. If cats can do social distancing, so can we. It can be frustrating adjusting to or accepting this new normal. But let's try to keep the good vibes going. This song helps us do that. African world musician and UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador Angela Kijo remade Miriam Makeba's 60s South Africa dance hit song, Pata Pata, to raise awareness on COVID-19, focusing on hundreds of millions of people in remote communities around the world. Pata Pata means to touch and to feel, which we shouldn't do. Everybody can help fight COVID-19 by doing what we need to do. No submissions from the Philippines, so representing the country here. So much fun, you should try it. You know, we really need to do a little bit of dancing every day. It does help keep the good vibes going. Spread the dance, not the disease. We've never spent as much time at home as we have these lockdown days. And even if we can socialize online, it would just be so nice if we could have real face-to-face -face time with our family, our friends, share meals with them, hug them, even interact with our colleagues at work. We will meet again, but for now, we have to keep up the social distancing and the creativity. Like 10-year-old Paige Okre in the U.S. who came up with a way to hug her grandparents. She created what she calls a hug curtain, using a shower curtain, Ziploc bags, and disposable plates. Others are taking creativity to new levels with their outfit of the day or OOTD, like Karen Lukes who came up with this fantasy apocalypse outfit with things she had around her house. On GVTV today, we celebrate art and creativity which can really help us get through difficult times like the one we're in now. Thanks to 9-year-old Sophia Yapching for this drawing, taking me back to my news anchoring days on CNN Philippines when she and her mom palms would tune in. Scotty, Wolfie and I love this, Sophia. This new tribute to frontliners featuring superhero Darna in scrubs and face mask brings new color and energy to Maginhawa Street, Quezon City. It's a project by a group of artists known as Art Attack. This Banksy artwork entitled Game Changer that appeared in a UK hospital paying tribute to healthcare frontliners got the staff emotional. One of them told the BBC that the painting will be a boost to morale for everyone who works and is cared for at the hospital. With the face masks now part of our OOTD, fashion designers like Red Iala are bringing their creativity to making face masks from surplus textiles and clothing, donating to those in need. Rhett says the face mask is a symbol of our hopes and fears. You can purchase masks online at rettiala.ph, with proceeds going into food packs for frontliners and families in need. Designers around the world are looking at a future where face masks may be our new norm. Belgian design studio We Want More repurposed old sneakers to create cool non-medical grade face masks, changing the sneaker's functional role but still allowing the wearer an emotional mode of self-expression. This multifunctional design merges a reusable face mask with headphones using bone conduction technology. I love how this design from Roshan Hakim tries to solve another problem caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the piles of non-reusable elements that the medical world needs to fight this. Hakim uses recycled PET bottles to create reusable plastic face shields. These face masks made from plastics found in the ocean are already available, created by the Professional Association of Diving Instructors, or PADI, in partnership with Rashar. Another design element to consider is this. Ever notice how painful it gets around the ear when you wear your mask for too long? Imagine what it's like for the frontliners. A crocheting community is sharing their artistry and hobby to help medical frontliners through their Ear Savers for Frontliners campaign, creating ear guards to help reduce irritation to the back of the earlobe caused by the face mask's elastic bands. 
The campaign, co-founded by Marivic Bugasto last April, has provided over 2,000 ear savers to frontliners at hospitals and checkpoints around her province, Benguet, as well as Pangasinan and La Union. They improve their ear saver designs based on feedback from frontliners. From the crochet, it went to, to cloth, it goes to yeah. headbands. I don't know what's going to be next. The best talaga is cloth. Yes, cloth. yes. Yung crocheted naman, talaga maganda naman, ganyan. Pero, Uh-oh. yeah, it frays. Yeah. And the advice sa amin, functionality over aesthetics. The crochet community keeps growing with more volunteers joining in. Talaga nga no, team effort, community effort, kaya nakakatuwa. As a cancer survivor, you have your own concerns during this crisis. What has kept your spirits up? What gives you hope and good vibes? One thing I learned from, I think she's a mutual friend, si Kara. Magsano you can kayo. never be too, yeah. Yes. With Kara, I learned na you can never be too tired, too sick, or too, too busy to not help. Ganyan. So, um, aside from yung ito na nagka-crafts, crafts na ganyan, OPD din ako, outpatient department ng, ng, ng tatlong hospital. So, yeah. The patients call me, natutuwa ako na I'm able to help. What gives me hope, what, what brightens up my day, ganyan. Yes. Everybody is giving a hand to do something or the other. People are helping each other. There's so much good in other people. Creativity and resourcefulness really go a long way in any crisis. They also boost our brain power and good vibes too. Since his kids miss the park so much, one dad built them a slide from cardboard boxes indoors. His video post went viral, prompting him to share the secret to making a quarantine slide for your kids. If you're doing a lot of cooking and baking at home these days and you're missing tools like an egg beater, how about this hack? Cool yourself off and whip it good at the same time. And if you miss those outdoor barbecues, you can always simulate it in your home, like this guy. Sarap ng luto mo, ah, kuya. Now this is talent. I think you have to be a really good dancer, more than a good cook, to do this. Quarantine has challenged travel photographer and writer Erin Sullivan to be creative with her work. She creates amazing adventure photos using stuff around the house. Erin says creating this series of images has been therapeutic. It helped keep her imagination active and her creative practice alive. Another photographer, Glenn Wexler, created this editorial shot in 2002 for Time Magazine's feature story entitled Will We Be Safer? about living with the threat of biohazards. The photo has been making the rounds again. Will the future look like this? Music is another art form that soothes the soul. Ever wondered what the coronavirus might sound like as music? I never gave that much thought, but composer, material scientist, and professor of engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Marcus Bueller and his colleagues have turned the virus into music. As explained by ScienceMag.org, the sounds you hear, like the chiming bells, represent different aspects of the spike-like protein that pokes from the virus's surface and helps it latch onto cells. Like all proteins, the spikes are made of combinations of amino acids. Using a new technique called sonification, Bueller's team assigned each amino acid a unique note in a musical scale, converting the entire protein into what you're listening to now. This track has gotten worldwide attention, with people marveling at its beauty. One of the comments, Why is this coronavirus so damn chill? I thought the same thing. But why interpret the virus into music? Bueller said the music might help researchers design an antibody, taking a musical counterpoint to the virus's melody and rhythm, and using artificial intelligence to try to find an antibody that matches it. In an interview on the NPR podcast Shortwave, Bueller said that music is another type of microscope we can use to understand the world. He hopes that this offers a way for people to engage with this virus beyond fear, allowing them to more deeply understand and even respect it the way scientists do. It's something most of us will never be able to see, but can now perhaps, in a way, hear and feel. 
classical music, we go to another form of art and self-expression, rap. DJ and music producer Mark Beats put out this 24 bars challenge last March when the community quarantine started. Let's check out some of the responses. Manila firefighter Ferdinand Dulao reminds people to follow lockdown rules. This one's from Kid Reyes of Batang Palaban. These beats brought out the rapper in my partner in good vibes, GVTV editor Iro Dancel, who wrote up these lines while working on this. Hey GVTV peeps, sending good vibes for keeps, creativity of art since lockdown from the start, from protection, connection, and more of inspiration to all of you at home, be safe and joy stone. Now let me introduce you to the person who told me about this Mark Beats challenge, my niece Sammy. We'll hear a few lines from her too, but first, Sammy shares how music comes to her rescue. So whenever I feel down or just not like myself, one thing I like to do is to listen to music. I like listening to all genres of music, but one genre in particular just perks up my mood, and it's musical theater. Hamilton is one of my favorite musicals, and I actually got the chance to see it last December in San Francisco, and it just changed my life. Really opened my eyes to the importance of being politically aware. I also really like that the musical is told through rap songs, which makes me appreciate it more because it strays away from conventional theater and introduces something new that a lot more people can enjoy. The virus, the pandemic, bringing people together, but we're stuck at home, talking on a computer, making noise on the socials, all we can do. If you can kill us from a phone's ready, aim, shoot. When the ECQ started last March, I came across the Mark Beats 24 Bar Challenge on Curtis Smith's Instagram account. and. I was inspired to make my own. And these are new lines Sammy wrote about making sense of the new normal. Welcome aboard Philippines 2020. Would you like corrupt officials? We got the plenty. Bird. But seriously, I wish I could do something. But I'm stuck at home making songs and rapping. I'm scared for the future. What if we have done? Does it mean everything I stand for will be gone? Why are we fighting for something when we have no say? I gotta use my voice and do some good for the change. I said, turn up the volume. Some last words from Sammy about dealing with the new normal. So as we do our best to adjust to the new normal, I think that above everything else, the most important thing is to take care of yourself. And it's not just physically, it's also important that we take care of ourselves on the inside. And one of the best ways to do that is meditation or journaling, watching a good movie, baking cookies, talking to your friends, and as well as being mindful and grateful of what you have around you. I just really wanted to share a message of positivity and remind you guys that you are not alone in what you're feeling, you are not alone in your loneliness, and you are bigger than what is making you anxious. Thanks for the good advice, Sammy. Proud Tita here. Now to another form of self-expression and therapy, visual art. I talked to doctor and artist Ginger Ramirez about the meditative space that art can provide in chaotic times like this. Hi, Ginger. Thanks for making time for us despite your very busy schedule. So I know you work with the Department of Health and you're part of the Secretariat for the Interagency Task Force for Emerging uh, infectious diseases and you're super busy these days. Can you tell me how you've been dealing with uh, the these the recent months with the crisis? As, as you can imagine, uh, the Department of Health is very busy right now and like everything is urgent. I'm alone right now in, in my house, no? so I'm having to deal with all of that then uh, on my own. So I guess like, the challenges of work plus the challenges of you know being physically distant then with all other human beings. <laughs> Um, pressure and stress that has been there, a lot of anxieties, um, a lot of emotions actually, major roller coaster of emotions. Even at the very beginning, especially even dealing with uh, parang the the sadness. Yeah, because you're, you're a doctor, so you know what it's like for the frontliners. I, so I work in public health, so we do the, the back end work, the policy work. But we have, I have classmates, I have friends who are really in the front lines and they would you know, message na, like, what is DOH doing? <laughs> um, like, please help us because like, you're the ones who are able to facilitate those um, like, higher level 
policies then. It's very difficult because there are many emotions from like being pulled in different directions from you know pressures with work to anxiety to sadness to grief for for the so many deaths. So how have you been coping with the stress in this situation? I guess just like everyone else, I'm trying to my best to connect with other people, trying to I guess connect with myself. Then in the past few weeks, I've been trying to draw a little bit more, which I was not able to do at the beginning um, because it was just incredibly busy. So yeah, that has helped. I think just to also get me out of that like work mode and stress mode, just give myself some some time to step back, reflect, and um, I guess just not to worry about things, no? So this piece on the boat, tell me about that. I was just drawing lines and dots to not think of anything. Uh -oh. the, the last part of that drawing was the, the, the girl in the boat. As the waves were evolving in the drawing, and I realized para it's para siyang napaka busy, crazy, um, unstable ng environment. And at some point, para I felt that yeah, this is this says a lot about what we're going through right now. And I wanted to make sure that that girl, um, yung disposition niya was a disposition of openness. Na like in the midst of all that, um, there's that certain stability. And I think that's the beautiful um, thing then about like the imagery of the ocean or, or water. Na even if it's all crazy and parang di malang sa kadadalen, um, if you're steady and stable, yeah. then it you can keep afloat then. What came to me was really like navigating into the new normal um, because yes. we were preparing policies for the new normal oh. <laughs> uh, for the age and so parang it, it really just stood out na parang, yeah, like we don't know what this new normal really means actually. Okay, we don't know what's what's happening pero we accept whatever that will be and we will make sure that, you know, um, like we are rooted in our core and grounded in our yes. core. We, we tend to forget whenever there's a difficult situation, we sometimes forget to breathe. You did something yes. that just said breathe, no? With the elephant. That's yes. very, why, why the elephant? Oh, I love elephants. Um, elephants are, for me, huh? they're, they're a symbol of both strength and gentleness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a reminder, siguro, that to, to breathe and to take time to um, ground oneself. Yeah, yeah, and, and para, uh, tap into my inner elephant, <laughs> siguro. Yes, it's a good reminder. And earlier you were talking about the storm on that boat. You did another one with two people under an umbrella. It's a storm. And you had a quote there from um, Murakami. What, what message did you want to put out? So the, I guess the reminder sa akin lang doon is that you're not going through this alone. And the message that, you know, like in the quote, kasi it says na the storm, like it does seem like when you're in the middle of the storm, it feels like the storm is there to destroy everything but maybe um, it's not that uh, that is not the intention or like at the end of the storm there may be something good that will come out of it and it's really, it might be um, meant to just clear things as yes. well clear us of like distractions of things that are not important like the imagery was about like really communion being going through this together even yes. if we do feel isolated and alone and that we will be able to overcome this as, a, as one community, as one humanity then. So you had the trapeze drawings. I talk about that, that those two drawings. That was um, prompted by um, a mentor of mine, um, si Sir Jojo um, Fresnedi. So she was, he was uh, facilitating like, um, with um, Ma'am Rodora this like, small group in Facebook to help people reflect on things. So she, he shared about um, this certain transitions and that sense of um, being in transition, like, yeah, like you don't know where you are, like being in that liminal space, la, you don't know where you're headed, you don't know what's next, but you're not exactly where you were as well. So like you're in that in, in between. And when she shared that image of being in a trapeze, no, yung, that moment when you have let go, but you're still not, you haven't arrived yet at, the, at your destination, you're just there. Flying in the air. In a, yeah, fine. You're 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 just there. <laughs> yeah. So yung first image was about ano, um, like this this girl na has just let go of whatever is yeah. behind her, um, uh, and if yung yung facial expression niya is a lot of uncertainty. Like, yeah. like okay, I've let go. Now what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the I guess the message there then is that you know it the the transitions can 
be made easier or you know um pag may alam natin din na may sasalo sa atin at the end if you have that yes. um sense na we're here to catch each other um yeah. After all that, after all that uncertainty. It's very good messages now. And it's something I think that will really be helpful and inspiring to all of us as we navigate nga this new normal. Thanks for sharing that with us, Ginger. We're all in this together, building a better, brighter new normal. And that's your dose of good vibes today. Thanks for watching. This is Mitzi Borromeo with Scotty and Wolfie, reminding you to be safe, be grateful, be kind, and keep spreading the good vibes. Here's a dose of good vibes from 12-year-old Brianna Harper and her uncle, reminding us there ain't no mountain high enough to keep us apart. Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough, baby. Don't worry, baby. Cause baby, there ain't no mountain high enough Ain't no valley low enough Ain't no river wide enough To keep me from getting to you, baby Remember the day I set you free I told you you can always call me, darling